Welcome back. This is still 101 on Plus TV Africa, and with me is Mr. Bami Dele Onolaja, the MD CEO of Revolution Plus. Thank you for still staying here with us. Thank you. Okay, so let's talk about um, building collapse because you talked about the properties you're developing in different parts of the world, not just Nigeria right now. Why do we have cases of building collapses in Nigeria and why do we keep having this sort of issue? So many things, so many reasons. Um, Build, I'll call it control. So many developers and so many people building don't go through the right processes. Mm -hmm. Because number one, for it to construct from even a bungalow and from a one-story building, there are approvals for it to be gotten from the government or from the local government. So, so many people don't wait for such approval to come out because in the approval, there are several things to consider when you're building, when you're constructing. Beyond the architectural drawing, most of what people know is, ah, this building is looking so beautiful. But beyond that building, you have to do the structural test, the structural drawing. You have to do the m and &E, mechanical, electrical. So many things are involved to make your building come up. But when you submit those approvals, and maybe while the government is doing some corrections on the drawing you submit, people go to sites and they start constructing. And also on the part of the government, the approval process is too slow. So you can imagine you put it in the for approval three, six months, and there's time value of money. Maybe you borrowed money from the bank, you, are, you ought to start the construction, and there's no approval for six months. So it, the interest is piling. So that's why people jump to and start constructing. Mm. So if there can be proper approval, the the personnel doing the approvals come on time, do the approval, give the approval maybe within 30 days, and do the corrections where it's needed be, it will reduce. And so many people don't they, they don't patronize experts. Okay, before we go, go to, to patronizing Babela. experts, yeah. talking about approvals, aside as being slow. Are these um, people trustworthy? Because we've had cases. The government where, officials? Yes, we've had cases where you would hear, okay, if you go there and grease this palm and grease this palm, even a property that isn't supposed to be in that location would be approved. I mean, going even towards my area, you see a filling station in the midst of um, residential yeah, properties. Sure, yeah. So are these people trustworthy aside being slow? Well, definitely, this is Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I will not say they are not trustworthy, but I, I will say there's corruption everywhere. Every, every sector of this country, there's corruption. Because number one, um, I see no reason why an approval should take that long. And I see no reason why an individual that has been asked to come and supervise a project should ask for kickbacks. But it happens. But that is not enough reason for you not to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And but that, that's a disaster. That's what happened because once they give you money, you cannot say, you cannot stand on the truth. You will shift. And that's where the problem is. So there are, some of them are very, I've met officials of the government that's, that are truthful. They stand on what they want to do. After they've done it, you can say thank you. But they won't ask you. You can always say thank you. And I've met a very corrupt one that number one, they are telling you, Oga, they even want to collect money more than the government. The government is said telling you for this approval or for this thing, pay one million naira. They will be telling you their own peer is 1.5. Yes, it's 1.5 million naira. They will tell you to their face. I ah, want to collect money more than the government. They say, okay, if you cannot do it, leave it. So as someone that wants to get my approvals done, I will have no choice now to give them. So after giving them, they overlook some major thing that they ought to see. So, eventually, the building collapsed. Mm. But I'm saying, despite it, even after me saying thank you, you should still do your job. Still do it. Look at the things that you're supposed to look at. Am I supposed to use 14 mm steel here, yeah, and I'm using 10 mm? What's the concrete mix? Is it right? Is it wrong? You correct it so that it will be minimal. Then people, um, like I said, people don't want to pay, professionals. They call Babalata, Babarisi, to come and build for them. And before you know... That's Babari what you mean by not patronizing experts. Expert, yes. Babarisi is not an expert. It's just one bricklayer that has been doing bricklaying for 10 years. He has not gone to any formal school. He doesn't know anything. He just believes, I'm a bricklayer, I can build. So you give the, you draw the drawing. Instead of you giving the drawing to a Q, uh, an architect that will do a proper architectural drawing for you, you give it to Babarisi, you sit down with him, you use pencil. 
to draw it. Babari says, oh, I can do it like this now. Oh, yeah. You give Babari C money. Before you know Babari C, the building collapsed on him. Hmm. So we don't patronize experts because experts are not cheap and people don't want to pay. So what would you say to um, your customers or someone out there who wants to buy a home? How do they ensure that the home they're getting into is not a death trap? Okay, what we do in Revolution Plus, we go through integrity tests a lot. We have, we have over 10, 15 engineers that man our sites. We have control policies, we have architects, we have QS. It's a proper property development company. So when you come, when you want to buy, like we have projects we are building everywhere. So we go, we make sure that our project goes through the process of approval with the government. It goes through it. It might take a while, but we make sure that we wait and they give us the approval. We move, we go ahead. So that's the way it works. So anybody, no, nobody does buy property or house from a revolution plus is a debt trap. It has never happened because we do the right thing. Mm, but I'm looking at it generally now, size revolution plus. So. Um, someone wants to get a property. Is there are there steps you can recommend for them to take in order yes, to ensure yes, yes. that? Yes. Now, number house... one, one of the major things that people are scared of is they want they don't want to lose money. Okay. Okay. Let me start from that. You want to buy a property, you don't want to lose money. Apart from the housing, the house you want to buy collapsing. Another thing is making sure your money is safe. Okay. It might not collapse, but there can be issues later. Maybe with the, with the title, with the documentation that they will tell you, this person that sold to you is not the original owner. I've seen it happen several times on even a property, they mm -hmm. bit on the, on the land. So the man will lose it because whoever gets the land, owns the land, owns the house. The man will eventually lose the house and lose the land. So now, for basic step, once you have want to buy a property in any state, let me use Lagos for instance, you will go through Alausa, there's a process for search. You get the document of our claim, for instance, let me say Revolution Plus, we want to buy property, we want to sell property in Lekki. I'm sure there's a document for it. You get the document, you take it to Allah, you search it, you pay for the search. Mm -hmm. It comes out. You understand? You ask, you go to the uh, property also, ask around. How did they get this property? Who owns it? Are they the original owner? So you do your due diligence. Due diligence is very, very important. You get a lawyer. For instance, mm -hmm. let your lawyer do the job for you. You go to everywhere, go to the company you want to buy the property from, go and search at Alausa, go to the project, ask certain questions, your approvals, okay, how is it, how did you get this, before you pay with your money. Mm. There are people who have done their due diligence, like you put it, and um, they still have their stories with um, people we call land grabbers, or they call them moneyless, right? So. I mean, you've spent six years in the business. I want to believe... I, I've not spent six years in the business. I've spent 18 years Revolution in the business. Plus. Don't forget, before I get to Revolution Plus, I was mm -hmm. a mortgage banker. Okay. So mortgages and real estate goes together. Okay. I had 13 years experience in the mortgage banking in sector and now where I years. developed houses. Okay for the bank okay so basically it means that you've spent 18 years in the industry in the industry and yeah. definitely this is not an assumption anymore you must have encountered the land grabbers and the or people they call them there's so many so, so what would you advise in that yeah, case well, because people do their due diligence really we've seen cases we've seen stories people we know people who somebody we know knows you know and it still happens so okay let me take it away from what the person should do what is the situation with land grabbers in Lagos states and maybe Ogun state, especially now? Well, for instance, if you want to buy property, that's why we have private developers like us, okay. Revolution Plus. Nobody goes through a money again. If it's at this point in time, you want to buy property, a house or land, you are still going to a money You are wasting your time and your money. We are the ones that face a money there. We get the land secured for you. All our estates are gated and fenced. You cannot enter anyhow. So if you go to a money layer, there's almost 100% that you will lose your money. If you don't lose the money, when you want to do your fencing, they will come. Mm -hmm. When you want to do your roofing, they will come. Oh, so we come. Oh, plastering, they will come. So by the time you put all those ones together, the stress is too much. You just leave the land and run away. Mm -hmm. So what people do now, they call Revolution Plus. I want to buy a property. We go through there. We show them the list catalog of all our estates they choose from. 
they can be rest assured that from such a state, there won't be a money there, there's no land grabber. So if you are still experiencing land grabber and you are listening to me, you are going through the wrong channel. Mm. What Lagos State Government has done with land grabber, there's a, in the Ministry of Justice in Lagos State, there's a department for land grabber, there's a section that they created for land grabber cases. So if you report, maybe you buy land from Omonile and you're having issues, you go there, you report, they take it off for you. Okay. But why go do that stress? Why you can't go to developers that will sort out everything for you once and for all? Okay, let's talk about our new reality, the new normal at the pandemic, COVID-19. How would you say it has affected the real estate? Or would you categorize real estate as that sector that wasn't affected? Real estate is the sector that benefited most mm. in the COVID-19 era. Quote, so? me, quote me anywhere. How so? Well, because number one, they say stay in your house, leave your home, don't go anywhere. If you don't have a house, you will sleep on the streets. So immediately the lockdown got lifted a bit. People started investing in real estate. Revolution Plus has benefited so much during this COVID mm -hmm. than any other time this year. Mm. COVID started around March, April. What the sales we have made around March, April from May till now is more than what we've done throughout the year. Mm -hmm. So because number one, everybody wants to go home now, especially our brothers and sisters in diaspora. Mm -hmm. They all want to come back home. So what they've been able to do is to invest back home through Revolution Plus. And it's not a story of even in this sector, in the sector, because I'm a member of Redan, Real Estate Development Association of Nigeria. So I know what's going on with my friends and my colleagues in the industry. Mm -hmm. COVID has favored real estate more than any other sector. It has favored agriculture too. Mm -hmm. So it's one place because everybody wants to live in a house. The government is saying stay at home. So if you don't have a house, so it's an eye opener for everybody. I must have a house. So, so immediately after the lockdown, we start publicizing. People started coming. They want a house. They want a land. They are so it has been good. Okay. I don't say the only thing is that people can't go out. The, the risk is high. Mm. But concerning investment in real estate. People are investing more now. Mm, but some are of the opinion that the idea of working from home may shift the uh, um, uh, value from the choice, the properties we regard as choice properties now, where you have the the companies Maybe and commercial all, properties, and, commercial properties and, and move it away to um, the, the, the residential properties. Do you see that happening or is it happening already? It is not happening per se okay. right now. Most companies now, so many of them are still working from home, their staffs. Mm -hmm. But eventually, COVID, maybe I see it going maybe after a year. They all go back to their properties. And it, has, it might have affected the commercial properties a bit, but it has given a plus to residential properties. Okay. Residential properties are doing so well. I know the, most of the commercial properties are under lock and keys now. Mm -hmm. Restaurants, hotels, um, offices so it might be a true boy tomb be forever and don't forget properties and investment is, is for life so if the property is not where you sell it to somebody another person that can use it and it's becoming usable mm. so, so how how would you rate or what would you say would be the real estate market outlook going forward okay let me say in the next three years or four years i see it it has peaked real estate market right now in, in Nigeria, for instance, as a case study, as picked, has gone up better than before. Mm -hmm. Because of COVID, everybody now have this enlightenment that they want to live in here. They want to have a house of their own. I'm talking of residential property now. Okay. So another thing, one major thing that real estate um, development has faced over the year is funding. And we are still facing it. You asked me a question, how do we fund Revolution Plus? Revolution Plus have been funded through my very minute um, bank finance, but most of the projects we do have been OPM, other people's money. We have investors give money and we invest, they get returns. Mm -hmm. So that's what we've been doing. But we, I, I make sure that I don't take loan from banks because I'm a, as an ex-banker, I'm risk averse. I'm very, very careful taking, taking, um, taking loan. Because I've learned over the years that the loans you take, if you're not careful, we are in your business hmm. from okay. the banks. Definitely, there are people who look up to you. What advice would you give them? The focus, I'm a very focused person. I work extra hard. Mm -hmm. I'm a very focused person, then I love God. You'll be, I'll be saying grace, grace. 
but I have so much grace and be focused. Don't be distracted because distraction is much everywhere. We started Revolution Plus from a shop, very small office at, maybe very, very small. But now we have offices everywhere, owned by us. So without focus, we cannot achieve all this. So we focus, be trustworthy. And one thing that has worked for us also is trustworthiness. Integrity. Integrity has worked for us. Okay. We have challenges in projects, which is normal. We come out to our, 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 our customers, there's a challenge in this project, so let's move it to this or that one. And they say, yes, OK, it's fine. So instead of you packaging and lying and so, we are very, we have integrity. All right. Thank you for your time, Mr. Nolaja. Thank you very much. Okay. And thank you for watching. You can catch up on this conversation and others such as this on our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. Also follow us on socials at Plus TV Africa. My name is Elsie Godwin. Please do stay safe. Mm -hmm.